Well, hello there, YouTubers. Welcome to another Pi Game tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is extending our button function. Uh, right now, obviously, we've got our, our beautiful hover action going on. It feels, looks, and feels like a button, but it doesn't quite act like a button. So um, we already know that there is a way to know where the mouse is because that's how we're actually making the buttons you know, look interactive. But how do we know when the button's been clicked? Um, because it's not a button. So how do we like have event handling for something that's not a button? Well, it just so turns out that there are ways to do this. So let's go up to our button function. And what I'll go ahead and do is the following. So we've got a definition of mouse. We also can have a definition of a click. So we can say click equals pygame.mouse.get underscore not position, but pressed. And it just so happens that Pygame collects all kinds of data all the time. And on your mouse, it collects the left, right, and middle button. Uh, so let's go ahead and save and run that really quick. And we'll just come over here. I'll just put this here, and then I'll move this over here. Nice, beautiful. And let's click. Oh, we didn't print any click. Nice. What a fool. Uh, so print click. Derp. Run that up one more time. And uh, now, as you can see, it's a constant stream. And um, as we click, you can see the ones appeared, and I'm holding down my left button. Cool. Holding down my right now, we've got a bunch of ones. And then my center, got a bunch of ones. Now, this is not including the mouse wheel rolling, it's clicking the mouse wheel for the center, just for clarity. But we're mostly interested in the left click. Well, since we ha we're getting the mouse position, how do we know when there's been a click? Well, when mouse position element 0 is a 1, we've got a click. So uh, let's close out of this. And now we can ask the question. Uh, first of all, we're only curious about a click whenever we're within the bounds of our button. right? So we can come right here. And we can say if click 0 equals 1, what do we want to do? Uh, print nuclear missiles launched. OK, so we'll save and run that. And now we've got this. Oh, we're printing out all that nastiness. That's OK. We'll just keep that printing out. I'm trying to arrange it. But when we click on our screen now, we'll click on the go, and we can see it's spamming out all the nuclear missiles that we've launched. So it does know when we're clicking on our, on our button. So if we know when we're clicking on that button, adding functionality to that is only one step away now. So what we can do is we can do something like, um, we can come over to our game intro and our button here, and we can add another parameter, and this parameter is, oops, uh, in quotes here, play, and this parameter is quit. Easy enough. So then, what we can do is we can come up to our actual button function. We need to add one more thing to it, and we're just going to add action, uh, and that's to parameters. And then we can come down here to our this if statement. And then we're asking if click 0 equals 1. Um, and then actually, we can, well, let's make action um, the parameter have a default of none. So we can say action equals none. That's in the parameters. So we can ask if click 0 is 1 and action exclamation mark equals, as in not equal, uh, none. Well, now we want to do something. And then what we can do is we can say if action, let's see, yeah, if action equals play, what do we want to do? Well, now we just want to run the game loop, right? So we just run this function right here. So I'll copy that and we'll come back up here. And we will do game loop uh, params. Then we can also ask L if action equals quit, what do we want to do? Well, we just run a pygame.quit to uninitialize pygame and then quit. 
And now we should have functionality in our button. So let's go ahead and save and run that. And we hit go. And now we're playing our game like a bunch of ballers. And we crash. <laughs> um, nice. And you crash. Okay. And then uh, what we can do is, let's do it again. And then we can hit quit. And that quits the game for us. So, uh, like I was saying in the last video, though, this isn't quite the best because wouldn't we want to have like a button function that performs any function that we pass through? It? Because this is kind of sloppy. I mean, I'm going to be honest. This isn't the best way to do it. Um, so the question is, can we pass a function through? You can't pass a whole function through because if you do something like that, like action equals none, um, just for kicks. You don't have to, yeah, you can follow along if you'd like. Um, but let's say, um, here's a tip as well for you guys. If you want to comment out a block, you can use the multi-line comment or you can use a shorthand commenting where you highlight this block of code, Alt-3. And now you've commented out this code. It's very fast, I love doing it. So if you didn't know that, congratulations. I didn't know that for at least two years. Um, and I'm so thankful to have found it now. Uh, and just so you know, if you want to uncomment that, Alt-4. So keep that in mind. Anyway, um, so what would be ideal is that we just say if there is an action and it's not none, let's, let's just do that action, right? That'd be great. So we would come down here and we would say, uh, oops, let's go to our game intro here. Our action, instead of being play, is uh, actually let's run quit. Quit's a little more um, makes a lot more sense. So quit, right? Actually, quit needs two things. So let's let's do play. I'm sorry, guys. So so let's just straight up pass game loop through here. But here's the problem: when we go to def when we go to load code, if you throw a function in there, it's going to run. So when we save and run this, it's going to wait for a while. <laughs> And it's going to shove us straight into the game. Now, uh, what might we be able to do? Well, we could go something like this. Um, game loop. And then game loop immediately runs. Like, you could try to cheat the system, right? So you could say, uh, game intro. <laughs> like a so. Um, but the problem here... Oh, okay. Uh, we get a, a bit of an infinite loop. But anyways, um, I thought it would be more interesting than a bunch of red text. But anyway, um, so we can't quite, we can't do that. But you might ask, well, what, what, what if we pass the object, right? The, the actual function object. So we just delete the uh, parenthesis. So we'll save and run that. And we click go. Nothing happens because now all we're doing is referencing the object. What if then we come up here and we add the function thingies to action? And now we can get through and actually do the action. But then the next question remains, uh, what about um, actions like uh, the quit functionality that we want? Well, our quit actually wants to be two things. So we could kind of cheat and do this very sloppy, and instead of quit, we could just do quit and really just mess up the whole the whole thing. Um, okay. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just quit. No no parameters. Um, that's how we do it. And then you hit quit. Um, see, it's not going to want to quit because we are on. Oh, actually. Okay. So it. Well, let's run that. Let me run that real quick uh, via. Sorry, I think I'm having too much fun with this, actually. Um, what freaking tutorial number are we on? 15. That would be this one here. Pygame video 15. Run it. This might actually work, but we're never uninitializing Pygame. Yeah, so that worked. But we're not uninitializing Pygame, so that's not the ideal uh, result. Um, so then what you would need to do is, uh, if event.type equals Pygame quit, um, we need to just have like a, you know, exit game functionality, something like that. Um, 
Because I don't think that we can get away with, you know, maybe we could add um, if quit or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, there's obviously all kinds of stuff that you can do. Because for the most part, when you click a button, you really just want one function to run. You're not actually trying to run multiple functions here. Um, and in fact, maybe what we could do is run uh, pygame.quit game loop. We could run, uh, nah, there's no way to get away from this. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, so you, you know, you might have to define a quick, uh, define a quit game function and then have that be like pygame.quit and then quit and then you pass quit game through instead of quit like that. Save and run it. And now our Go works fabulous, and the quit works, or should work. I'm already saying it works, but I'm just assuming that it's going to work. I make no mistakes. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how we can pass actions uh, through our buttons and have our buttons be uh, pretty functional. So at this point, you can actually just, you can use this button function. It's not even that long of a function, really. I'm going to get rid of this stuff because we don't need it anymore. Um, and, and, and that's all you needed. So why this is not included in um, Pygame naturally, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you just gave inactive color and active color a default color option, maybe that's why, I don't know, because then because nobody predefines colors either. There really should be predefined colors in Pygame too. I don't, I'm not like quite sure why there's not like predefined at least like white, black, red, green, blue. Like that just makes total sense to me. Why wouldn't you predefine, have those like in, built into Pygame, but whatever. So anyway, um, I'm just not really sure why buttons aren't built into Pygame either. Um, they've got a lot of really, really great functionality in Pygame, so it is kind of weird that you don't have buttons built in. And I have seen like some third-party button modules, but um, they're a lot more complex than this. I'm not quite sure why you need anything more complex than this. It would be kind of cool to have like rounded edges to your buttons. Uh, I challenge anyone <laughs> to do that one. Good luck uh, if you want to do that. So anyway, um, that's going to be it uh, for now. Um, pro I have some high hopes for some like Pi Game games that I want to make. I'm not really sure when I'll release the next batch of Pi Game videos, but hopefully this will tide you guys over for your Pi Game fix for now. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. If you have any requests or like there's something very specific you want to see, like how can we do X in Pi Game? Please do not ask me to like do you know crazy stuff in Pi Game. I'm not going to make uh, Battlefield 4 in Pi Game. Um, but if you guys have something that you really want to see how it's done in Pi Game, or like maybe how might you do something? Because like buttons, for example, there's no way like immediately built into Pi Game to make buttons, but you can use tools and make buttons anyways. So, anyways, if you guys have any requests, feel free to make them. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.